Sarah Harrison is a British journalist, investigations editor at WikiLeaks, and the director of the Courage Foundation. She played a decisive role in accompanying NSA whistleblower Edward Snowden from Hong Kong to Moscow when the highly classified NSA documents were released in 2013. Thank you for joining us, Sarah. Thank you for having me. So let's talk about uh, Julian Assange's state in the Ecuadorian embassy. A lot of people could speculate how it is to live there and what state and condition is he, he is in. Can you elaborate on that? Um, well, he stays very strong. He focuses on his work a lot and with his type of personality and work ethic, this keeps him very busy and uh, keeps him going. We have a lot of good publications coming up this year. Um, and so that, yeah, definitely keeps him busy. There have been some uh, interesting wins in his legal case this year. For example, um, the United Nations ruled that his detention is arbitrary and that the United Kingdom and Sweden should release him immediately. Sadly, those countries are not actually following the United Nations judgment, but it uh, is still a positive move forward in his case. Um, they are very difficult conditions that he is there under. Um, for example, he basically is in one room within uh, what is a very small embassy in the centre of London. He has no outside space. He hasn't been able to be in the sun for four years now. Um, so it is, they are tough conditions, but he works through and he stays strong. Talking about that UN Working Group on Arbitrary Detention, uh, Philip Hammond, the UK Foreign Secretary, uh, dismissed it and called it, let me quote him, ridiculous and flawed in law. Can you comment on these reactions and, and explain us why there's such a, um, a strong reaction against this report? Um, well, Julian actually has asylum from uh, the, due to the threat of the United States. There is a very secret grand jury that is going on, that it is unprecedented in scale and nature, and the largest investigation into a publisher ever. Uh, this continues to this day, it's been going on since 2010, and it is for this threat that he has uh, asylum. Obviously, as we've seen in a number uh, of uh, situations, the UK and the US are very close politically, and there is the, the case uh, with Julian has been highly politicised. Um, so it is within that realm understandable that the UK are, are uh, upset that, even, that the United Nations are trying to ensure that they follow the rule of law in this case. Um, I, it is very sad to me as a British citizen that our MPs can stand there and say that the United Nations is ridiculous. To me that is just sad and shows how much we have diverted from the rule of law in our supposed Western democracies. He fears also espionage and uh, that's one of the reasons I think that um uh, that, that, that do not receive enough facts in the mainstream media. Could you talk about what facts uh, point towards that there's an investigation, an ongoing way to extradite him on those cases? Um, a number of documents come out in a variety of ways, some through hard-won FOIA cases within the US. Um, one came out, interestingly, a couple of years ago that was um, subpoenas to Google for emails of a number of WikiLeaks staff, including myself. This was my personal Google account that I hadn't used for quite a number of years. Um, but um, when the subpoena, when we were allowed to be told about this subpoena, we were given documentation on this. And this showed the legal charges, the criminal codes that they'd had to use, the US government had had to use to get this subpoena. And yes, as you say, this included the Espionage Act, uh, Computer Fraud and Abuse Act, um, Conspiracy, um, and a number of others. And these um, total many, many years in jail. And we've seen through the history of the United States, for example, with the Bradley Manning case, uh, Chelsea Manning, um, uh, that she was put into, she was given 35 years in jail and was subjected to treatment that was uh, akin to torture. Um, and this is what Julian can expect if he ends up in the United States. I want to talk quickly about two principles about the New England Charter, and which greatly contributed to international law when it came in terms of war crimes. So, principle four, the fact that a person acted pursuant to order of his government or of a superior does not relieve him from responsibility under international law, provided a moral choice was in fact possible. Then. And Principle seven, complicity in the commission of a crime against peace, a war crime, or a crime against humanity set forth in principle four is a crime under international law. So given these two principles, would you say Bradley Manning, uh, Chelsea Manning, um, 
Edward Snowden and Assange acted in moral conscious and just fall into the national law, or uh, would you um, say that the argument uh, that they jeopardize national security um, uh, plays a more decisive factor? I think that the concept that there has been any effect to so-called national security is actually just a propaganda term that the government have put out to essentially scare people um, into believing that there are issues um, with acts uh, of blowing the whistle and publishing this sort of information. There was an interesting point when we released um, the Afghan and then Iraq war logs in 2010. We were showing the US government's war crimes and their killing of hundreds of thousands of people. And yet they somehow managed a very successful propaganda attack where they turned this around and said, we had blood on our hands. Now, when it came to the Manning trial, they tried desperately to prove this in a court of law. And actually, even the United States government were unable to actually allow, uh, let this argument stand up in court. It has proven to be false in their own courts of law. Um, and so this is uh, clearly just one example of where it is just uh, propaganda attacks on us. Um, I think that it is clear to, it is clear to many people that um, the actions of Manning, Snowden, Assange are actually to do with um, not only a higher ethic, but actually within the rule of law, particularly when it comes to um, Edward Snowden and the US Constitution. He has actually just been upholding that uh, with his actions. So what future do you envision for Assange, Snowden and Manning? And what can people in Germany and worldwide do to support uh, them uh, given the state that they are in currently? Um, well, Manning uh, just last month all, uh, uh, lodged an appeal against her sentence. Um, Courage Foundation that I'm the director of uh, is running a, uh, a place where you can donate. Um, it will be a costly and long appeal and all the money, um, she'll need all the money she can get in that. Um, for, same for Julian and his long defence fund, as you can see, even these are the powers we're up against when even the United Nations is being ignored. So we definitely need as much help as possible there. And when it comes to WikiLeaks, um, we have many, many good publications coming up uh, for the rest of this year. And if you want to see them faster, then just donate more there. Sarah Harrison, Director of the Courage Foundation, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Thank you.